Hello again. So I'm going to do a lesson on reciprocal functions really quickly, and this one was actually brought by request, so I thought it'd be pretty cool. And the problem that I was given was 1 over, uh, and these just stand for the absolute value marks, uh, over negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared plus 5. Well, that's pretty difficult to, uh, you know, graph, make a plot table of, because I got this bad boy in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. I'm going to put this in the numerator. I'm going to put 1 in the denominator. I'm just going to flip it and graph this one instead. And then from there, try to ascertain what's going on with the reciprocal function. It's not going to be perfect. I don't have a graphing calculator, but I'm going to try my best. Uh, it's over 1, but you don't really need divided by 1. That's why I just wrote this instead of divided by 1. Now what you want to do if you want to try to figure this out is make yourself a table. So if you make yourself a table, you want to figure out how it's going to work. Uh, generally, I would use 3, uh, 5 for a medium one, 7 for a difficult one. And I'm going to tell you right now that this thing is going to look difficult. Some people are saying, isn't it just a V? Uh, no, there's some stipulations here. I can see that this is a parabola going down, but then you've got to add 5 to it, and then it's going to be an absolute value. So there's going to be some uh, weird behavior in this curve. So I'm going to create myself 7 plots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I believe that's 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And from here, I'm going to use this information to figure out this one. Now, uh, if you just you know, put in point 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's just not going to work. Because you're going to be given a part of the graph, but you're not going to be given the graph from the middle, the vertex of the graph, uh, how the uh, symmetry, I suppose. You know, you know, vertex, that's a poor word, actually, on this type of a graph, most likely. You're not going to be given the middle of the graph, so you want to be given the middle of the graph so that you can figure it out. And it's going to be a lot easier if you do that. Well, fortunately, when I work with a quadratic function, uh, part of it at least is quadratic, I've got this square here. Well, this is already in vertex form. So if this absolute value wasn't here, I would know that the vertex was negative 3 to 5. But the absolute value complicates things. So I know that the middle point for the x value is going to be at negative 3. Uh, so there I go. I know it's at negative 3. And from there, I'm going to go an even amount of spaces in each direction. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, something like that, hopefully. And we're going to see what this graph ends up doing. And yeah, I just have one of those feelings. So when I go ahead and I substitute in negative 3, uh, I'm going to just let you do that yourself. Negative 3 plus 3, then you square it, then you multiply whatever that is by negative 2 and add 5. Well, when you put in negative 3, you get um, 0 plus 5 is 5. Now, the reason why I did this first and then do these last is because these values... Uh, these values and these values should be the same. So I don't want to do twice as much work. And I'll prove it one time, but that's it. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 and negative 4, even though I know they're going to be the same value. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1, squared is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 5 is 3. Uh, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So, okay, that works. No need to waste my time here. I'm, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to do this one, and then just write the same answer. I'm going to do this one, and just write the same answer. So when I substitute in negative 1, I get 2 squared, 4, negative 8, negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. No, because it's the absolute value of negative 3, so the answer is 3. All your y values are just going to be positive, because you're going to have to end up taking the absolute value of each one. This is 3. Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, the graph is definitely not going to do this. It's not going to do one of those things. There's got to be something that happens in between these two points and happens in between these two points. It's just the way it's got to go. Uh, when I substitute in 0, I get 9, negative 18, plus 5. It's negative 13. Absolute value is 13. So there we go, 13. Yeah, this is not a very pretty graph. Um, what I want to uh, help you out and understand, though, or what I want to help you understand, though, is this. Well, why did I do this and, you know, I'm not doing this? Well, very simple, here's the relation. This is 13 over 1, 3 over 1, 3 over 1, 5 over 1, 3 over 1, 3 over 1, 13 over 1. I already know the x and the y values here. You're like, well, how could you possibly know that without doing it? Well, it's very simple. Negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, that goes to 0. Negative 1 and 0. My y values are just going to be the reciprocal of these values. Since this one and this one are reciprocals, the y values are going to be reciprocals. 1 over 13, 1 over 3, ah, 1 over 3, 1 over 5, 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 
1 over 13. 1 over 13. So I'm going to try to figure out what this one looks like, and uh, from there, I'll try to figure out what that graph looks like. So I graph this as best as possible, I suppose. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to need more than 13, actually. 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I do that, I get negative 6, 13, negative 5, 3, negative 4, 3. And remember, I'm just graphing this one. I'm going to graph this one afterwards. 13, negative 5, 3, 3, that's going to be 5, 3, 3, 13. The graph does not do this. Hey, boom. Boom. It, it can't possibly do that. It's not going to stay at the same spot from uh, negative 4 to negative 5 and from negative 2 to negative 1. Pardon, this is the best I could have drawn. It's got to do something very unusual. Now my guess is this, that it goes down like this and then comes back up sharply. Uh, a way to confirm that is to put in a value between uh, negative 1 and negative 2 and between negative 5 and negative 4. But I should warn you, based on the information of the graph, the middle of those two points will not be the, mo the lower point. It, it just can't be. It's, it's going to be a quadratic and it's going to you know, shoot back up. Uh, there is actually a way to figure out what could be the lowest point. I'm uh, hard pressed to you know, you know, figure out what it is, but we could always do that. Basically what you want to do, if you want to figure out the lowest point, is you want to figure out where this is closest to zero. Um, if you want to do that, what you can do is you can say, okay, uh, ignore the 5. Basically, you want to see where x, what number plus 3 squared times negative 2 plus 5 is going to be 0. Well, let's take that even a step further. Um, what number times negative 2 plus 5 is 0? This is a very critical step here. Uh, negative 5 plus 5 would be 0. Uh, negative 2.5, I'm sorry, ah, well, it actually can't be negative 2.5 because it's squared. 2.5 times negative 2 would be negative 5, plus 5 would be 0. So I have to figure out where this value, this x plus 3 squared, is really close to 2.5. Oh gosh, this is definitely not a uh, beginner algebra step. It's very difficult to say the least. Uh, if you have a graphing calculator, you just you know, do that trace button, it's really easy. But if you don't, you've got to figure it out in your head. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to figure out where x plus 3 squared... Um, is equal to 2.5. 2.5 is the same thing as 5 over 2. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. And I'm, I'm not going to work with decimals if I don't have to. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what that x value would be. So uh, take the square root of both sides, take the square root of both sides. So x plus 3 equals uh, plus or minus square root of 5 over square root of 2. Uh, if you want to figure out this one, what you have to do is multiply by the square root of 2 on both the top and the bottom. Square root of 5 times square root of 2 is square root of 10. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So actually, this is square root 10 over 2. I told you, not a problem that's for the faint of heart. This is actually a very difficult problem. Very difficult. Uh, subtract 3, subtract 3 x equals uh, square root of 10 over 2 minus 3, or x equals uh, negative square root of 10 over 2 minus 3. Extremely difficult. Uh, square root of 10, it's more than 3, less than 4, 3 point, let's see, 1, 3, 10, 1, 6. Yeah, about like 3.16, yeah, 3.16 should probably make, no, that's, that, that's too much. Hmm. hmm, I don't know. That's, that's pretty difficult for me to figure out. Uh, divide by 2. No, that could work. 3.16. Yeah, I think so. So, the square root of 10 over 2 is 3.16. About. Um, over 2, minus 3. And it's negative 3.16 over 2. Uh, minus 3, because I'm doing plus or minus, 3.16 divided by 2 is 1.58, I don't know, yeah, that's, that's pretty difficult. 
I can't, you know what, I can't really figure it out. But I know that it's not perfect. If you take this, square root of 10, uh, plus or minus, over 2, subtracted by 3, if you do square root of 10 over 2 minus 3 and negative square root of 10 over 2 minus 3, you will figure out where your low and your high points are. I would probably suggest that they are, well, not suggest actually, that they're probably like right here and right here for the x values. But this you have to do in your head and you need the use of a calculator. So if I were to graph this bad boy, it would look something like this and like this. And then it would just, uh, where's my 13 that I erased so needlessly, right there. And it would just shoot up like that and shoot up like that. So this graph looks like this. So if I want to graph its reciprocal function, which I'm going to do right now, it's going to be pretty brutal to say the least. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, at negative 6, it's 1 over 13, so it's pretty small. At negative 5, it's 1 third, which is like 0.33333, so that's slightly less. Yeah, this isn't a perfect graph. It's uh, negative 4 is 1 third. Negative 3 is 1 fifth, which is negative point, excuse me, which is 0.2, which is somewhere there, in between there and there. And this one goes back to 1 over 13, which is down there. So, I do actually know something about this particular graph. I did a lesson on horizontal asymptotes. When the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, it means that the horizontal asymptotes are zero, which means that I know this graph will do this towards the end. This will be its end behavior, and this will be its end behavior. It'll never actually go below that threshold. Other than that, it's a little confusing. Uh, let me go ahead and show you, though. This was, well, one of the relative maximums of the graph. It's not the highest max, it's not the highest point, but it's one of them. And this is one of the relative lows. This is what happens when you graph a reciprocal function. Now, this one's going down here. Well, this one's going to go up. This one's going uh, down here, so this one's going to go up. And it keeps going down and down and down and down and down uh, to some, yeah, like, probably some point here. I have no idea how high it goes. It could actually go up to more than 100 for the y value. Because if it's 1 over a really small number, it, it's going to be really high. So what I do know about this graph is that it's going to go sharp like this. You know, I, it's going to hit a point somewhere. I don't think it's at 7, but I think it's going to keep going and going for quite a while, actually, and do this. So if I graph this reciprocal function, it looks like this. Uh, this is where the power of the graphing calculator is slightly stronger than my mind, to say the least. I would actually use a table function on this one. It's uh, pretty difficult, you know, I have to uh, you know, be a little subservient there because I can't find the point without sitting there for 20 or 30 minutes trying to figure out each point. But if I were to, uh, if I wanted to know the highest points here and here, or the lowest points here and here, what I would do is this, I would solve for x, and whatever this x value is, this um, uh, square, plus or minus square root 10, over 2, subtracted by 3, will give you something that's really close to um, 2.5 as an answer. And what happens is, I'm going to multiply that by negative 2, and that's going to give me something really, really close to negative 5. And then when I figure that out, and I add 5, it's going to give me something really, really close to 0 on this graph, or something really close to 1 over 0 on this graph. So I know that if you want to find uh, your lowest points here, figure out what your x values are. And if you want to find your highest points here, figure out what those x values are, and you should be able to do it. Um, but I can't do that without a calculator. I wish I could, but... Uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.